real common problem that people face, especially with a younger puppy, is how do we leash train the dog? How do we get the dog to engage to us and how to stay with us during our walk and not make it consequential or negative for the dog? Let's take a look at your leash walking, see what you're doing. Now, Ziggy has some obedience training on him. Now, Ziggy is used to having fun and engaging, but that's not happening in this walk. So what we want to focus on here is how do we get Ziggy to look at, at, at Yossi, okay. engage in the walk, and make the walk an active participation with his owner. We want to make it fun. We want to engage the dog, Good. but we want to make it um, where the dog isn't always looking at something else and isn't always distracted. That's what we're going to cover in today's lesson. So what you're seeing is you're constantly engaging the dog, right? You're saying, Ziggy, let's go. And when there's no Ziggy, let's go, he's kind of checked out, right? And that's a big problem because you can't spend the entire 20 minute walk exactly. saying, Ziggy, let's go, let's do this, let's do that. Exactly. Part of the issue is always gonna be a dog's prey drive. So the idea that this dog is smelling things, hearing things and seeing things that are distracting him are not helping him to learn the lesson, right? So to make it a little bit easier for the dog in the initial picture, what I want to do is take him away from things that can distract him. His biggest enemy, just like his biggest friend, is his nose, right? So the more he smells like this, there's other dogs here, there's rabbit poop, there's deer poop, there's all these smells, that's driving him crazy. Since that's his strongest scent, let's eliminate that one. Let's move him over here to the parking lot and let's start again. So all you got to think about here is your same, the same kind of walk you did. The key thing to watch here is going to be Yossi's body language. Watch how he's leaning on the dog. Okay, a little bit better already. The leash is tight and he's kind of waiting for Ziggy to catch up. And you can see that now it's the visual that he's cueing into. Now he's watching things that are happening, right? but we eliminated the nose, which is his biggest enemy here. Nice. Getting a little better, but notice Yossi is still looking back all the time. Good. Now you're making all turns to the right, right? Which is okay, but think about mixing it up a little bit. If you go down, you can't get from here to Chicago only making right-hand turns. And you see the, the walk is still about an exercise per se. The dog right. is looking for direction. He's watching him too much. Just keep walking straight for a little bit. Let's see how far you can go and let's see what happens. I'm gonna follow behind you. And you'll see here now the dog is starting to check out and kind of go on his walk. He's starting to walk and occasionally looking back at Yossi. We're gonna talk about that in a second. All right, come on back. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel. You'll see a lot more videos just like it. Okay. So one thing, here's where one issue is gonna come up because we've been doing a lot of competitive style training with him. He knows heel and heel means look at me, stay next to me and go. It's, it's not a format that this dog can hang on to, and this is where a lot of people make their mistakes. They'll learn a formal heel with a dog, and they immediately, when they try to heal the dog, they say heel, and the dog is looking up and walking, and then the dog starts to fall apart. You can't expect a dog to stay in a focused heel on a walk. So my dogs walk for one thing, and I have one command for that, and that command for me is let's go, or you can use with me, or anything like that. When you want him to heal, it's heal, he has to look at you and he has to stay footstep to footstep where you're going. Now, a couple of the little mistakes you're making with him is you're communicating to him tactily where you want him to be. And as long as he has that tactile communication with you, which is your pressure on the leash, he doesn't need to see where you are, right? So in other words, if I was walking with you and I was walking like this, this connection makes me be able to do all this stuff, right? I can check out here, I can listen to my Walkman, I can do whatever. But when I lose this, I have to do that. So that leash pressure right there is telling him exactly where you are. And I wanna eliminate that from his communication, right? So, okay, there's a nice picture. He's got a little distraction here with some dogs coming, right? He's, it's gonna be loose. He's not gonna have a problem with the dogs. We can show that actually. Um, 
But what I want to do, <laughs> he's more interested in the camera. Good boy, Zig. Zig. Good boy. And that's just a really nice balanced dog where he doesn't have issues with other dogs or anything like that. So he's not going to go try to lunge at them. Um, what I want to do, and again, I'm always waiting till I'm a little bit free from distractions to teach him this, because if he's checking out, I've got to pop and correct him right. to, uh, to fix that. You have a long line with him, right? What you want to do is you want to use the length of the leash to be your friend. So the old school way of doing this was called long line training. And I always put a knot in the end of the long line so that I know where he is. Right, so this gives me the communication. What I want to do with him is I want to make being next to me a pleasurable thing, right? And what most people do when they leash walk their dog is they do this. They're doing this the whole time. So right now there's pressure. Oh, you got an eye goober. Um, they put pressure on the dog's neck when the dog is close. And what that teaches the dog is that this is an, un see how uncomfortable he is? He's seeing that this is not where I want to be. What I want him to see is that this is where you want to be, but that's not where you want to be, right? Now, I can't, not, I can't correct him for that because he's with you, right? But what I want you to do here is I'm going to just take him for a quick couple steps around and I'm going to have you do it. But the idea here is going to be, I'm going to wrap this around my hand so that he can't get away because he's got a busy street here. And I'm going to say, Ziggy, let's go. And I'm gonna make this as loose as I can. I'm gonna give him as much room to make a mistake as possible, right? So there's no, see there's no tension on that leash. See where he's staying with me? Because there's no tactile communication. So there, if he goes that way, I'm gonna go this way. What did he just do? He came and sat closer to me because he's trying to figure out how do I turn off the pressure that's there. So that's phase one. Now, even though you're his dad and he loves you more, he's touching me because that's kind of what he's used to. He's used to this tactile thing of if, he, if, I, if I feel it, it's a safety zone. But if I don't feel it, like he doesn't feel my leash. With you, he felt his leash. So I want him, and when he does this, I'm going to say, what a good boy. I don't want to correct him over there. I want him just, in other words, if I correct him over there, he says, Oh, well, when I hear the correction, I got to come back like who? No! And then yank the dog back. Or well, when you don't hear the no, in the, in the absence of the verbal, there's no communication. I want him to think just his mistake of being further away from me is the negative. So watch, I'm going to walk him by again. I'm going to go here. No pressure, right? I'm going to let him have as much of that line as he wants. And here, watch what I do. When I turn, that's where the correction pressure comes in. And look what he does. He comes right back. If you want to see the rest of this video, head on to my member section, robertcabral.com. See the rest of this video and hundreds more just like it. I'll see you there.